what an honor to be here. Uh, I've got, I'm a prolific note taker and I've got pages and pages of notes of really good ideas that I've absorbed from being with you people today and the last couple of days. Uh, so here's what we're going to do. Uh, I've thought about how to do this uh, presentation six or seven different ways and just rewrote it in the, probably the last half hour. Uh, so <laughs> uh, uh, let's, let's uh, try and think of it this way. We're going to go on a journey here for 20 minutes. Uh, we've got to set up the journey with a hypothesis or what is the really nucleus of the big idea and then we'll uh, laminate to that, say, three or four stories of how that big idea was applied uh, and was turned into reality, but in b various different circumstances. So let's jump into setting the stage uh, with something that happened in my lifetime. Uh, I, I guess I'm a serial entrepreneur, but if there's anything that would depict who I am, it's that I've been an in incredibly lucky person, and the common denominator of all that luck is everywhere along the way where we built companies, started companies, or achieved whatever success was, there was no me, it was always a we, and secondly, in every case, there was a mentor moved into my life and had a profound effect uh, on me, profound effect on me and left me with uh, mentoring for that moment in time, but also something that I would go back and draw on in a, in a cumulative or geometric way to the next situation and apply that again. So the jumping in place and the three or four stories that I want to talk to you about positive psychology, I want to talk about what it means, the origin of it as fast as I can, uh, and uh, how I became acquainted with it, and how the impact of positive psychology and strength-based uh, decision-making, really strength-based leadership, then has been applied in a serial way to many companies that I've started or worked with or situations or boards, not-for-profit, for-profit, etc. So the intersection was that when I was four days into being a freshman in college, a guy in a rumpled suit came up and tugged on my shoulder and said, my name is Don Clifton, and I'm looking for an assistant or somebody could work for me. And uh, I worked for him for three and four and a half years in the University of Nebraska. But Don Clifton was starting uh, to build something that would eventually be known as Strength Finders. But his idea is that there is no uh, greater uh, fulcrum for making decisions, building people, than to focus on their strength. And so. As the father of positive psychology, which wasn't there, he was inventing this, he had interviewed over a million people or situations to determine uh, what, what characteristics people have, and he eventually evolved this into 34 talents, and I'll talk about what they are. And he had done this starting in the 50s and 60s, and in the middle 60s, he left the university, commercialized this into something called Selection Research, Inc., which was to identify talent, build teams, and use positive psychology or strength-based uh, 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 methodology to really develop uh, and fast-track and identify who's going to be successful. So I started out as a ba bag carrier. We had an insanely odd and strange uh, laboratory things we did, but eventually it turned into the creation of a book called Strength Finders, I have three or four copies, and anybody, I'm going to hand them out at the end. Uh, but that's, it's culminated. He started, uh, started this research project, strength-based uh, assessment of people, studying only about wellness. Uh, he been built this into a company to uh, benchmark people, help in leadership development and the selection of people. And that translated into... Uh, we had the opportunity to buy the Gallup organization when George Gallup died. I helped him acquire. He had a great team. And he has wonderful staff. But he acquired the Gallup organization, and today it's a global powerhouse measuring not only large-based attitudinal changes, Gallup, and, uh, but also individual performance and leadership through strength base. So what he discovered was 
he discovered that there were 34 characteristics of talent, and uh, these are possessed by all of us. He also said, I never want to know what's wrong with somebody, and if you're coaching or building teams, it's a waste of time to figure out what they can or can't do. How many people here are actually familiar with strength finders? There's quite a few. This is wonderful. So uh, this is, has been developed. My, my strengths are, the top five strengths are really like the fingers on your hand become the fulcrum around how you manage and develop other people. And uh, my strengths were, uh, uh, I'm a futurist, uh, uh, very responsible, uh, strategic uh, individualization, and a maximizer. So those five characteristics uh, in that order are only owned by, you know, one out of a million and two million people. In other words, it's a lot like DNA. It's unique to each person in the sequence in those top five. But it's those top five in combination that really matter. So what, what strength finders and, and this kind of assessment led to was an ability to uh, identify who's going to be, in my mind, successful. Now, he would argue, and the company would argue, that how I applied it wasn't exactly how they intended it, but I picked this up and started applying it. So I'm going to talk to you about things we did in Deloitte and, Deloitte and Touche, things we did in DoubleClick, uh, MCI, a, a, a tragic and big turnaround situation, and other situations, how we applied this. And also lessons I learned from Don Clifton. Uh, when I was with him, one of the things that he taught me very early on was the value that each individual, just like you have a DNA, each individual has a brand. So each of you have a brand. And you need to be very conscious of that. And you need to build a brand and write it down and start to understand what that brand is and who you really are. Uh, we learned about the importance, and I adopted it when I was 18 or 19 years old, of having a personal board of directors. So throughout my entire career, I've always had a board of directors of four or five people who were constantly in contact, but it was a personal board, not a corporate board. This helped me navigate through all kinds of situations, mostly opportunities. Uh, so that was a technique. Another thing that we developed, that I actually developed, but he triggered these things in my mind, which is the importance of what we called the four eyes. And so when I evolved, eventually went into, into Deuce Ross or Deloitte, uh, it's a talent game, and w we had to hire a lot of talent. We only hired the top 15% of classes, but we had to hire them in very big numbers. And so I developed a formula that's called the four eyes, which went of interviewing people, and we got very good at doing this interviewing very fast, which is the first one is intelligence. How smart are they? Second one is industrious. It's, it's, it's what just a sheer Midwestern work ethic. Do they love work? Is work fun for them? How long can they work? The work ethic is a very important factor, regardless of how intelligent they are. The next one uh, uh, it deals with uh, uh, innovation. How, how good are they at either causing change, creating change, driving change, or even accepting change? Is change threatening to them, or do they constantly want to increase their value, their brand, by getting better or innovating? And uh, are they threatened by situations? Are they gravit that they go to run towards the sound of the gunfire? They love change and they want to innovate. And the last one is integrity. So it's a geometric equation: ten times ten times ten times ten. So you're ten. You're really smart. Ten times the person is really a hard worker. Ten, uh, very innovative. And uh, the last one is character or integrity, which one of your uh, earlier speakers put as a capstone on the back end of his speech. Uh, uh, this idea of character and integrity and ethics. Uh, so if it's 10 times 10 times 10 times 0, you're a 0. So when you're hiring people and you're getting through there and there's a little person in the back of your mind saying, there's, I'm listening to this track record and they've been involved in these scrapes and they're, they, they're, I'm questionable ethical behavior and so on, don't hire them. You don't want those people, they'll, they're a, one bad apple in the whole outfit is going to get in the barrel and it'll poison everything and stay away from bad people. My mother used to say nothing happens good after 10 o'clock. What she was really saying is 
uh, stay away from, you know, associate with good people, and it'll, it'll really pay off. So these are the things around values that I learned from Don Clifton. And the, th the thing I learned about applying positive psychology and then making the, the individual strengths, the fulcrum around relationships is that it became very efficient ways to, to speed talk. And so as we, we find out what, how people are wired, how we work with them, uh, it involves a great level, in, in, it's a lubricant for trust. And trust, now we're talking positive psychology, we're talking about knowing strengths-based, but when we go up here in the hierarchy, trust is the lubricant uh, to success. Tr you cannot overemphasize, there's no way you can put your arms around it and get above the level of trust. Trust is something that is in has to be throughout every organization. And the reason trust is important is because it, it allows you, to, it's a great equalizer. So the CEO, as you as the CEO, can talk to the receptionist, you can talk to a customer, and you start to understand the importance of trust. And the importance of trust is always predicated on the relationship of the CEO and with whom you're speaking. So it might be an employee, it might be a customer, it might be a government regulator and so on. So what we really learned when we got into Don Clifton's, what I call this DNA analysis and, this, and the way you can speed through and you can instantly understand how people are wired up, is that it becomes a lubricant to how fast you can communicate with people. It, it's, it's a catalyst for trust, and trust is an overwhelmingly important component in all successful people. And the reason this is all relevant is what he unpacked in the middle and 50s, 60s is the discovery that nobody is the same and that you have to treat each person separately as an individual. Now, we went, the, the monumental importance of the discovery of positive psychology is nothing different than the importance of Newton's law. It's a law of nature that cannot be violated. It's that big, positive psychology and understanding the value of individuals and individualization. Individualization and personalization became a hot topic later on in the late 90s because everybody's got the internet, and we can cookie them, and we can Google them, we can find out, and we can search them. Everybody said, I've discovered individualization and personalization. Clifton put all this together in the 50s and what eventually became positive psychology, and that's why this is relevant is that, the, that each person has uh, great value and respect. Now, how did, we, uh, uh, how did he do this? He did it in a way that it could be applied to a lot of different situations, like building teams around it. Uh, people that have a great deal of trust is, have individual relationships. For example, they have their individual relationship with their board of directors. They have relationship with their customers. And uh, they, they know about the reservoirs of trust. There's a reservoir of trust around the stakeholders, about your customers, employees, and vendors, around, uh, and around your regulators. And people that are really good at managing and leading make sure those reservoirs never get uh, empty or low. They keep them full, and they keep them full by developing and keeping relationships of high levels of trust by teaching people uh, or in, uh, ensuring that the people they're dealing with know that you tr respect them and you see them and what their values are. So I'll talk to you about a situation at, Del at Deloitte. Uh, now I've, I've left, I've gone to New York and I'm running the tax department and I, I, I determined that the real value, the real business we're in was in, we were in a talent business. I had an insatiable need for talent. So I went back to Don Clifton. He had left now and started selection research. And I said, I, I see what we're doing here. And it, it, they thought it was the accounting business. I thought it was the talent business and it was a consulting business. And so I just saw every engagement as just serial way to create experiences that were satisfying to our clients and, and to solve them. So I said, I need to hire some good people. And a lot of them, and I don't know how to do that. And I said, can you help me? He said, do you know the names of the top 10 people that you think don't understand this profession or what you're trying to do? And I said, yeah, I know their names. I know who they are. Now, remember, 
he had this, he had researched over 400 professions and businesses to prove up that this uh, this strength finders analysis was ubiquitous and worked so when I, he came to me uh, and said, I think I can do it. He said, give me these 10 people. He interviewed them. He came back to me and said, uh, the people that you want, you interview them against this template. Here's 300 questions. Ask them in this order, and it'll reveal whether you want to hire them or not. And, I, and because I, I templated, he wrote the questions out, and I learned how to interview people really fast. So as he the parting shot, he said, there's something really interesting about these people I, you gave me the interview. Uh, they're all right and left-brained, they, and they intersect over the front, of, over the top of it at 7%. He said, incidentally, you're 7% or 8% overlap. You process data, numbers, and concepts, ideas, written words, contracts, numbers, balance sheets. You do it, and you can do it, right, one on one chalkboard and the other one. You process all this in simultaneously process. So does all 10 of these people. And he said, incidentally, those people are all CPAs and lawyers would be the best people to hire. So we, we went out, and in the next 40, 48 months, I hired 700 lawyers and CPAs or, that had a combination of degrees, and it changed our firm. Next example was I got into, when the MCI went down, uh, the SEC and Justice Department hired four or five of us, and Nick Katzenbach, Attorney General, Eric Holder, Attorney General, uh, uh, Richard Breeden, former SEC chairman, myself, and several other really great guys. We paratrooped into MCI to do a big turnaround, and one of the things we found was this gigantic asset there, the enterprise group that was providing consulting services for the major companies in the world, including the Pentagon, the Green Zone, J.P. Morgan. For, for, and we had to try and figure out how to take this enterprise group and attach it to a great value so we could create an asset so we could get out of bankruptcy and we could sell the company. So it fell to me, and for certain reasons, to try and figure out how to maximize the value of this enterprise group. There was, it had a sales and service staff of about 6,000. So I brought in the Gallup organization, and they went through the whole thing from stem to stem, used strength finders, restacked all the people, did the benchmarking, says, the guy you got in sales should be leading the whole thing, and the person that's leading it should be over here in marketing. And we reorganized the thing in weeks. And uh, then they said to make sure this works, they went out to the, all the major clients and did an audit to the clients. They, so they'd go to the client and says, why do you hire, hire MCI? And thinking because they had great, a great product. And they said, because they're the best problem solvers. Whoever set this organization up, they all have this DNA of entrepreneurialism. I don't want to be in the fiber optics business. You got the best fiber optics. But these guys bundle solutions and come in and talk to me as CEO in terms that I can understand of how this is going to help me run FedEx or how it's going to run the bank or the back offices or, or the data processing unit or build uh, rockets or whatever, the, uh, run fast food organizations. So, so we, we went out and did an audit of the consumer customers, found out what, how we were experientially delivering the service, came back and restructured the teams and went right back out. And eventually it was the biggest single diamond in the, in the overall value of it. When I uh, had the opportunity, was given the gift or the opportunity to start DoubleClick because we, we, I'd bought a large advertising agency and a management buyout, both L. Jacobs, Ken Eckhart, we had a great business doing website design, and, and, uh, but it was losing money hand over fist. The more we did, the more money we lost because the guys didn't know anything about accounting or business, so they put me in charge of it because I was the least technically competent. But I bought this, I met this guy, our team of people, Dwight and Miriam, and, uh, and a couple of people, and we bought this algorithm, which was an algorithm. But I instantly saw with a team of people that we, this could be used to serve ads. So if you've been on the, uh, get the one minute deal here, if you've been on the internet and it could figure out who it is, we figured out because we were advertising. And so we put together a, a company that would serve ads based on what you just looked at. And we did, started with one person, and five, I bought the technology for $500,000 for 60% of it. We ran it up to 10 or $12 billion in terms of market cap for the ultimate company. <laughs> 
Okay, but the, the wear and tear, I've, I, you talk about doing business, business in Russia. If you take these people out of traditional publishing and go to internet and how to smish these people together, I would have been lost without the training of seeing the richness and the value of each individual and how they could th fit into a supervisory role or how, they, how important they were and not to worry what they couldn't do, but what they could do and create teams. So you, we talked about the, the, the value of Don Clifton and positive psychology. We've talked about it's been validated now it's from the 50s and 60s when it's created. And I think it's the largest single movement going forward is it because just like the Internet has revealed the value of each individual and personalization, it's the star, it's the north, by, it's, the, it's the absolute true north that when I get into a situation, I revert back to all the training and knowledge I got on managing and developing relationships with people on basing on what's right with them. And not, I don't want to know what's wrong with them because it'll taint my thinking and, and using that to build teams. Uh, for example, in, in our companies, we put their five strengths on the back of their business cards and it's, it's on their door sill as they walk in. So you're walking into the office. I'm looking at these. I've never met this guy, but I'm walking into his office. I'm going to have, have a meeting with him. And we also guess if we're, when we're doing a pit, pitch for new business, we also try and figure out what the strengths of the, of the customer we're going to get and we go... Uh, kind of shrink them and figure out what we're going to say. So we identify how they're wired and it allows us to be really successful. So the final conclusion is if you're interested in really developing super high performance, very fast uh, reacting companies that is based on trust and trust is the lubricant to all success in business or in not-for-profits and families, I would suggest that I uh, think you might be interested in, 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 uh, in strength finders and the positive psychology that I've applied to a number of these business situations in my life. Uh, get a coach, uh, build teams around it, and I think you'll find uh, a great deal of success. But it'd be hard to talk to about success to this group because I'm so impressed to be here. I'm so grateful for the, uh, I've got seven or eight really mind-changing uh, ideas from you, and I'm, I'm humbled to be here, and I thank you for the opportunity.